Good morning, all. Uh, myself, Arif Hasan Dar. Uh, uh, I will give a uh, presentation on uh, uh, excess to fluorescent organic push from a force with white light emitting uh, property uh, containing urea as an electron toner. I completed my PhD under the supervision of Dr. Jamrun Govind Swami at uh, Institute of Nanosciences and Technology, uh, India. Before going into the main uh, topic of my presentation, I will give a brief introduction about the non pluralgonic push pull chromophores. Push pull chromophores are simple molecules with a uh, end group containing a uh, donor and acceptor parts. Uh, I suppose here, if you can see, it's one of the donor molecules, mean it is the acceptor molecule. And in between these two donor acceptor molecule uh, functional groups, there is the presence of conjugation. So basically, the presence uh, of uh, the position and the presence of uh, donor and acceptor groups with the conjugation amount extent of conjugation, uh, the properties of molecule will get changed. Suppose if we have a conjugation longer conjugation, then we can uh, have an absorption spectra in towards uh, low, low wavelength region. And if we have a, a less uh, conjugation between the donor and acceptor parts, we will have a absorption towards a longer wavelength region. This is just a simple example here. This graph, you can see the position of the donor and acceptor groups has a huge impact towards the absorption spectra of the molecule. Uh, basically, uh, this uh, Dilthey and Witzinger came with the theory of oxochrome chromophore theory. They said that chromophores are electron withdrawing groups and oxochromes are electron donating groups. Since the donor acceptor molecules are blurred, it's because of the presence of uh, uh, homolomo, newly formed homolomo orbitals, which lie uh, whose uh, uh, electronic shift lie in the region of visible region of uh, spectra that's why they are colored so this is general just uh, one of the example i have showed here the hemoglobin uh, in which uh, you can see the presence of uh, difference between the presence of two oxochromic groups like methyl and the aldehydic group has a huge impact in its absorption spectrum but the question is why do we care about the, about the functional groups or the donor or the acceptor groups present in a molecule since uh, uh, we know that uh, depend that different functional groups, different donor functional groups, and different acceptor functional groups have different hematocrit constant valves, which is a response, which is the parameter which has been set by the physical organic chemists for determining the reactivity of different organic molecules. Here you can see that uh, the nitro group has an hematocrit con para uh, substituted hematocrit constant value of 0 0.78, and NME, NME2 group has an uh, para uh, substitution uh, hematocrit constant value of minus 0 0.83, which is the highest known value for the, the reactivity in terms of uh, uh, its uh, reaction in cyclic addition reactions. <coughs> so, uh, why do we care? The question again remains the same. In 1974, uh, Avram and Ratner. Uh, uh, actually did uh, a groundbreaking work which is a highly excited paper in the specific chemical paper they uh, synthesized a molecule organic molecule rectifier uh, at, from that time uh, there's a huge transformation in organic electronics because the molecule which they have synthesized has, has a huge scope in determining uh, advanced functional materials like uh, it has a tunability in humulimo gaps and soft material as it was soft material the device fabrication was easy uh, after that, there has been a tremendous uh, a shift in the research towards organic electronic materials. But what we did is we used a uh, 2 plus 2 cycle addition retroelectrocyclization reaction uh, between uh, the donor substituted alkyne and the acceptor substituted alkene. As uh, this is just a gen this general synthetic uh, protocol for the synthesis of uh, non pure pushful chromophore, which we followed. Uh, here you can see that the alkyne. Uh, and this is the alkyne uh, with the donor substitution, and this is the acceptor with the alkene. Uh, uh, they will undergo 2 plus 2 cycle addition by this alkyne and this alkene, and will form butyl ene system. And then it will undergo retroelectrocyclization with the formation of push pull system with a completely different uh, dihedral angles. Uh, these are some of the um, uh, donor molecules. The silent features of this reaction why this is just first, uh, a single step click type reaction. The product formed is a twisted non pure push pull chromophore, and the product has an efficient charge transfer, and the, and the molecule, molecule is completely stable. So these are some of the donor blue uh, colored are some of the donor molecules which are yeah, present in uh, literature, and these are some of the acceptor molecules which are also present in literature. So these are some of the additions in the library of donor and acceptor parts which we added by my research, by my PhD thesis. 
that is the urea which we added in the donor part and this is the acceptor which we added in the acceptor part. As these are, and these are some of the bushful chemical systems which has been reported from the last decade by Dietrich Krupp. So what we did is, uh, since all these bushful chemophoric system has some limitations and some properties too, so the inherent properties of the bushful system which has been already known is uh, they have a stable, uh, they have a uh, redox behavior, reversible redox behavior, they have the stronger ICT band and for the limitation of them was uh, they were fluorescent, there was not any kind of functional group modification of their formation. But uh, we come up with a urea, a urea we suppose uh, uh, is a molecule which uh, consists of a nitrogen containing non pair of electrons. Uh, we thought that if we can uh, make a molecule of urea with an alkyne substitution, then uh, with a, if, we, if we bring uh, uh, the alkene uh, with an acceptor uh, functionality close to alkyne, then it may undergo two plus two degradation reaction and it may, may result in the formation of which will remove the system. The main uh, merits of this uh, where uh, uh, we can have a functional group uh, modification and uh, the presence of hydrogen bonding in urea may uh, evolve its uh, applied uh, material properties. So what we did is, uh, the hypothesis was, uh, since these two uh, nitrogen has, it, it urea has two nitrogen atoms with two hydrogens and uh, two lone pair of electrons. So uh, at, at one point, uh, since uh, this uh, carbonyl group is in complete resonance with both of these lone pair electrons, we feel that if we have uh, on one side alkyne, uh, the main objective is to make alkyne electron rich. Uh, so what we see is uh, we feel that if we bring somehow alkene in close to this alkyne at that time this one of lone pair electron will be in resonance with this and this will be in resonance with this alkyne and if we close if we bring close this uh, acceptor molecule to this then it will have two plus cyclic reaction. So actually this works and uh, we uh, find uh, we synthesize these three molecules uh, by using the same uh, procedure and compare the properties of these three molecules with the uh, uh, reference uh, molecule, uh, which has been synthesized pre pre even in 2005. Uh, af after the synthesis, after the regular synthesis, we uh, uh, check it, its photophysical properties. This is uh, this is the UV visible spectra of this molecule. This blue, uh, uh, this green uh, spectra is actually the reference compound. This one, fourth one, and uh, uh, after that we. Fortunately, check it, it is luminescence properties, and we found that these uh, urea based bushful chemicals were luminescent. Here you can see uh, this uh, green color, the green color spectra is of uh, the reference compound, which is completely emission less. And uh, these urea burst molecules were uh, emission. And uh, most pro more probably, we can say that they were covering the entire visible region of spectrum. Here you can see, although we find the quantum yield is uh, less uh, but we we can see here that it was covering the entire physical region which was not the case in previously synthesized visual chemicals but what we feel is uh, what we observed is uh, since uh, we we see that uh, the molecule shows the re high reactivity in presence of with tcne and result in the formation of pushful chemophore we see that uh, uh, it was comparable the reactivity was comparable with the n and dimethyl group uh, as and that of an uh, the reaction of urea and n and dimethyl was similar. So based on hematite constant value, we can see that uh, hematite constant of uh, oxymethyl and urea is actually the similar, which is quite different from that of n and dimethyl. So uh, what would can we say that the urea is equivalent to amine or uh, a urea is equivalent to amide? Then after digging out the literature, then we come up with that with this um, nice review in, on, by Taff in 1991. It says that it's not only the field uh, hematite constant values, there are also field effect value, which has a contribution in determining the reactivity of uh, uh, functional group, uh, substituted functional alkynes. So uh, these are some of the, uh, here you can see the position of the uh, chloride and the position of uh, in trans and cis fashion will determine the reactivity of uh, this uh, carboxylic acid. But it's actually the field effect, uh, which is responsible in the urea case by determining the reactivity towards the formation of uh, pushpull chromophore, uh, not only the donor, not only the hematite constant value. Here, uh, this we are saying because we found that the field effect value of N and dimethyl and urea is quite close 
to each other like uh, nl dimethyl has a permit constant value of 0 0.15 and urea has a permit constant value of 0 0.19 which is quite different in case of uh, oxymethyl and uh, metho methoxy and hemat constant is quite different so uh, what we see is it's not only uh, the hemat constant field effect has also a contribution in determining the reactivity of uh, uh, urea towards 2 plus 2 cycle addition reaction so then uh, what we see is uh, since the molecule was showing white light emission uh, in solution phase it was not showing the white light emission in solid state or any kind of emission in solid state here you can see uh, then we uh, since the white the emission in solid state has more importance as compared to emission in solution state we uh, uh, come up and and more importantly the white light emission it was showing only in uh, a single molecule was showing white light emission there are different sources white light emission uh, from a commercial source it, it contains uh, an emission with a different uh, color so the compost material will show white light emission and the drawback for that was uh, that would be the degradation rates uh, rates for different substances will be different and eventually this emission uh, will be will get uh, degraded with time which is not the case in uh, in single organic molecule here you can see that uh, we studied the photophysics of this molecule in different solvents uh, and then uh, studied its uh, its morphology in different solvents here you can see this is the fm spectra fm image in dhf where you can see that we found the fiber fiber like structures of urea uh, uh, which is because of the hydrogen bonding uh, in uh, solution phase uh, and we also uh, check with the dcspc uh, life from decay measurements of this molecule in two solvents uh, estro nitrate and thf the different uh, donor functionality in case of thf we have oxygen and in case of estro nitrate we have nitrogen here we see that in thf it was showing a little bit uh, higher uh, uh, decay lifetime as compared to that of estro nitrile which may be because of the hydrogen bonding uh, function and uh, which we also uh, corroborated with the FTIR spectra here you can see this uh, OH uh, functional group uh, uh, presence uh, in uh, enolic form and uh, form uh, uh, this carbonyl group presence here so it's because of the, the difference in the lifetime of these two uh, in these two solvents is because of the presence of uh, ketonal tautomeric shift in uh, uh, this uh, molecule but the main objective was uh, to translate uh, the emission from solution to solid state then we help we took the help of nanotechnology and we used uh, electrospinning technique to uh, make uh, the fibers uh, using polystyrene polymer in order to since in solution phase we uh, we in we infer that it's because of the indivisibility of molecule which uh, makes the molecular emission in solution state uh, which is not uh, when we make the more when we see the emission in solid state so we took the help of polystyrene polymer which suppose that uh, in polystyrene polymer the molecule will be uh, the molecular indivisibility will remain uh, intact like uh, they will not undergo, ag undergo aggregation any sort of aggregation which will uh, punch its uh, emission so the smith thing we observed uh, these are some of the images uh, where we uh, this this is the fiber in water and this is the emission uh, which was not uh, in case of uh, just uh, compound in a solid state these are the optical microscopic image of fibers which was showing completely all the colors like uh, red green and blue emission and then in order to further evolve that molecule in uh, by imaging since the molecule was uh, showing the property of photosensitizer we uh, col collaborated with one of our uh, legs here uh, one of the scientists here uh, dr rehan khan and we first uh, check the biocompatibility of a molecule to check whether the molecule is biocompatible or not and uh, which is the which is the follow-up work follow-up my work uh, thank you i would uh, like to acknowledge my supervisor dr jamurgan without whom uh, the work would not have been possible and this is our lab i uh, thank you